Hey guys, it is April from Getting Hooker With It. Today I'm here to do my July wrap up for you. I have read nine books in July and that is totally out of character. Usually I'll read around six books in a month, but I was on a roll and I think that the Booktubeathon had something to do with that. So let's get into it. I finally was able to finish Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire this month. I am trying to read all of the Harry Potter books over again via audiobook, which has been such an amazing experience. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Just J.K. Rowling can do no wrong with children's literature. But Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire you really start to see how dark this whole series is going to get. The next book that I read was Unbroken. Now I gave this five stars and it really might be my favorite nonfiction book that I've read this year because wow. This follows obviously the true story of Louis Zamperini and he was in the Olympics uh, right before World War II and he was in World War II and was in the Air Force. He was captured by the Japanese and survived the terror that is um, POW camps there. I cannot believe that this man survived so much and I cannot believe that this man lived such a big life. It was such a big huge life and it kind of makes you feel like you've done nothing because just so much happened to this man. I also read The Silence. Now this was a buddy read with Julie from A Girl and a Book and I think we both really liked this. This is a kind of dystopian horror book about these creatures that emerge from the ground and they kind of take over the world and kill people um, and the idea is that they hunt by sound not sight so you can't make any sound or you're going to die essentially. Now I gave this four stars and I really liked this. I think this is a great introduction to horror because it's not overwhelming. There's a few bloody seeds but it's not like really really gross so if you're a little iffy about horror Pick up the silence because this is a perfect for you. Um, I did think that the monsters could have been a little bit better. So the idea is that these monsters come up from the ground. They've been trapped underground for years and years and years, like thousands of years. And then they suddenly emerge. And what I did not understand was why they had wings. So these creatures have wings and they fly at you and if you make a sound they'll kill you. I I didn't think that that was realistic like if I'm not mistaken most of the creatures, animals and even bugs that are deep deep underground they don't have wings because why would they need wings? So that just seemed very unrealistic to me but uh, I really liked the storyline. I thought it was really fun. I could not put this down like this is a really fast read so I enjoyed that. I also read The Fact of a Body. This is a memoir and it's non-fiction and this was the hardest book I think I've ever read in my entire life. It's incredibly disturbing and it's not for the faint of heart. This is about a woman who had become a lawyer and she wanted to work for a firm that, you know, stood up for people who were on death row. And so when she was just starting, her well, new boss, I suppose, was saying, well, this is a case that we just finished. This is the type of thing that you could deal with, you could be dealing with, and are you okay with that? And that story is about a man who was a pedophile and 
he killed one of his victims and it is really disturbing. That story in and of itself is incredibly disturbing. That case changed this woman's life. Like it really impacted her. She was uh, molested by her grandfather. And so investigating this, this case brings up all sorts of stuff for her, for herself. And um, sexual abuse um, has touched my life. Thank God I was never sexually abused, but it has affected my life. And I have never fully understood what it would be like for the victim until I read this book. And it's drudged up a lot for me. It is very disturbing. It's um, emotional and it's brought up honestly a lot of anger for me so um I gave this five stars I nearly gave this four stars and the only reason that I was gonna give it four stars was because was because it was so hard for me it was such an emotional read for me but that's not a good enough reason that's actually a bad reason to give something to knock down a star because of what it drudges up in you. So it's definitely a five star read for me. This is the, about the complexities of molestation. This is about the wounds that heal and reopen as you work through um, it as a victim. This is about the alienation that victims go through and it's also about healing. <sighs> the next book that I read was I'm Thinking of Ending Things. This is a thriller about a woman who's on a road trip with her boyfriend and she's thinking of ending things. And you also find that she's being stalked um, by someone who keeps calling her and calling her and calling her. She won't pick up the phone when she's with her boyfriend. This was one of the best thrillers I've ever read. This is like a slow burn thriller. And one thing that I adore about this book is this is the type of thriller that you can read again. Like there are very few thrillers that you're gonna wanna read again. Like nobody wants to read The Girl on the Train twice because it's just shock value. This is makes you think. And, um, you know, I guessed the twist pretty much right away. Um, it was funny, I was talking to Rachel at the Shades of Orange about it and she, she didn't want to like respond and ruin anything for me, but I, I guessed the twist right away and it didn't ruin anything for me. It actually um, contributed a bit more for me. I feel like you could read this several times and never get sick of it. I, I think that I will read this again, um, maybe in a couple of years, just because it was so good. It's very disturbing. And there are scenes in here that I will never be able to get out of my mind, specifically about the stalker. Ah, oh, it's just so petrifying to me. It was really great. Um, and I think this is going to be one of my very favorite thrillers of the year, if not my favorite. Um, I gave this five stars, of course. So I also read The Alice Network, and this was part of my booktube -thon, and I really liked it. It was fun. It was a World War I and just after a World War II story. So you follow two storylines. One is you're following a female spy in World War I. She is kick ass. You just can't help but fall in love with that whole storyline. Um, and it's riveting, it's very fast paced. I loved that. And then you also follow another storyline that takes place just after World War II has ended. It follows a young girl 
who is pregnant, she's not married, so her parents want her to get a an abortion and she's not sure how she feels about it. Um, but what she is sure about is that she can't live without her cousin Rose, who has disappeared during the course of World War II. None of her family has been able to find her and she is on a mission to find Rose. I liked this book. I thought it could have been written a bit better. I, if I'm being honest, I thought the writing was kind of here and there. The second storyline, which follows the girl who's pregnant, she keeps referring to the fetus as her little problem or the little problem. And I'm telling you, it got so annoying to me. So I didn't like that. I also really did not like the amount of romance in here. That said, I also hated the amount of romance that was in um, The Nightingale. I gave The Nightingale three stars as well because I couldn't stand the amount of romance. So if you liked The Nightingale, you are probably gonna really like The Alice Network. And I'm going to read more by this author. Like, I think she's coming out with another one. I don't know when, but it's uh, about World War II and I am planning on reading that. So I'm not saying that I'll never pick anything up by her again or that I didn't enjoy it. Just those two things, the writing and the romance just ugh, drove me a little crazy. I also finished Every Heart a Doorway and oh my gosh guys this was wonderful. I gave it four stars. This is about kids who have gone to different worlds. So some of them might go to Neverland and some of them might go to Wonderland and what happens when they come home? Um, and in this story, their parents don't know what to do with them, so they send them to the school. And there they kind of recover from their experience in these other worlds and coming back, because you don't want to come back to your own world after. This was so mysterious and really magical. Um, there's also um, a bit of mystery in here. I, ju I just loved it. it. It was wonderful and I cannot wait to pick up the second. I also finished Pobby and Dinkin, which I gave four stars. Now I only picked this up because of Russell at Ink and Paper Blog and I need to thank him because this was fantastic. This follows a little boy whose sister has two imaginary friends named Pobby and Dingen. One day his father brings Pobby and Dingen to work and he forgets them there. And so his sister is quite devastated and she wants to know where Pobby and Dingen are and why are they missing and he decides to get the whole town involved. It's a small town and this small town knows about Pobby and Dingen. Um, so he tries to get them all involved to save Pobby and Dingen to find them because his sister is so wrought with worry that she makes herself sick or she is sick. It's unclear. Um, it is a novella. This is under 100 pages. Uh, please go out and read it. It's so wonderful. Uh, it's definitely a little bit heartbreaking, but it's also heartwarming at the same time what this little boy will do for his sister. It's just lovely. Finally, the last book that I read uh, was Milk and Honey. So this is a poetry collection and it was really lovely. I gave this four stars and this is a book about love and the loss of love and healing on your own. And you know, I, I do wish that I had something like this when I was dating because dating is hard. Dating is not perfect and you go through some really difficult times and I feel like there were little poems in here that would have helped me on that journey. Anyway, this was an amazing reading month. The worst book that I read, which I actually really loved, was a three star read. I had, how many five star reads did I have? One, two, three, four. I had four Five star reads. When does that, when does that ever happen? I would love to know what the best book you read in July was. Uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.